Hello, hello, my friends. Amy R. here with Prairie Paper and Ink. Welcome back to my face and my card making space. And my card for this week's color throwdown challenge, which I am woefully <laughs> behind on. It's been a couple weeks since I've had a chance to play along, even though they've had uh, some really good ones. Anyway, I will have a link to the color throwdown challenge in my blog post, which is linked directly below the video. For those that aren't aware, it's just a weekly challenge that's just for fun, that's open to anyone. And it just gets a person thinking outside the box a bit, especially like in terms of color. So I pulled out some of the newer uh, Pretty Pink Posh release and made a Valentine's adjacent card for my Valentine's series because really this card is more of a just because could send it to anyone. It would be a really good one. You could include a little gift card because on the inside I use the sentiment that says treat yourself and it's like that would work perfectly with you know add a gift card to something you know. So did some Copa coloring, little glossy accents, just had fun. So if you keep watching I will show you guys how I made this card. So I started off with the Pretty Pink Posh Sweet Chocolates little stamp set here. And I have my Misty Out and some of Simon Says Stamps Smooth White cardstock. And I'm going to stamp all the little chocolates from the set onto this cardstock with Simon's Intense Black Ink, which is an alcohol marker friendly ink. So I lined up all my my little stamps and then I'm going to rub them with my fingers because this is a, a newer set. I've used the sentiment on a previous project but I haven't used these little, these little chocolate stamps before and with high quality photopolymer stamps when they're brand new there's usually a bit of like a coating on them so I just rub my fingers on them. You can use like a, a white eraser stamping it multiple times on scrap paper that works too. It just helps them to stamp better if you find that your stamps are um if the ink is almost kind of like pooling up on them, especially you'll notice it, especially with like solid images, um, they just need a little bit of conditioning and they're, they're, they should be good to go. So after I stamped them, I did very simple Copic coloring. I didn't do anything, um, anything crazy, you know, a anything exciting. <laughs> I kept it simple. You could totally amp this up though and do like different brown combos you know to really give like the the brown tones some variety of a variety of chocolates but I just kept it simple I just did one my my one of my favorite brown combos for really anything really like e29 e27 e25 that has been one of my favorite combos for goodness like the 15 plus years I've been using my Copic markers so and I do darkest to lightest that is just a somewhat laziness factor it's less time less blending that's just how I like it but if you are newer to alcohol markers I do still recommend doing lightest to darkest it gives you a lot more control it's always easier to add more within reason um, than it is to try and blend it out if you've added too much of a darker shade so I went in colored all the colored all the little chocolate areas with the brown and then I'm going to go in with some pink and a set like this is fun. Same with like wafer dyes to build like little chocolates, that sort of a thing. It's just kind of fun because it's just like I can play and make my own chocolates without actually having to mess around and, and you know, melt and temper and all that like actual chocolate. <laughs> I would I would much rather either stamp and color them and then in a perfect world, I would like to just sit and enjoy real ones, you know, just deliver them to me, please. Thank you. <laughs> So I did pinks and then of course reds. Um, this was my only kind of deviation for what I normally do is I pulled in one more shade of red, which for images like this was kind of irrelevant because these are such small areas. It, it doesn't really matter that much. But this is another favorite combo of mine, of mine is the R29, 27 and 24. And then I brought in a little bit of that R39, just a more kind of plummy red just cause. But again, like I said, it's kind of irrelevant with such small areas um but whatever so and then as my final little bit is like a navy shade of blue because that's the color combo was pink red and navy blue so I did that for the wraps and the sprinkles on that one so once I was done coloring everything I'm going to use the little coordinating um wafer die set to die cut all of these out 
and I didn't add any white white gel pen highlights because when I colored these, I wasn't sure what I was going to do. Like I wasn't sure if I was going to add shimmer to them or glossy accents or what. But if you're going to do any of that, you do that before you add any white gel pen. So I just left it off till like the end of the card to figure out what I wanted to do. So I used the coordinating wafer dies and I just taped them into place with little bits of washi tape so that those don't shift when I run it through my die cut machine because there's nothing worse than spending all the time to color in an image and then you don't line up the die properly or you don't hold it in place properly and it moves and like cuts the image in half. Not fun. So I did that and then I grabbed just a scrap of red cardstock. I used my anti-static powder tool on that and I'm going to stamp the, the sweet word from that same little stamp set. I'm going to stamp that with clear embossing ink and then because I used the anti-static powder on there the embossing powder won't stick to anything but the little stamped sentiment and I coated that with detail white embossing powder tapped off the excess I'll melt that with my heat tool and then I just use my little microfiber cloth to um, you let the embossing powder like after it's melted you let it cool which only takes a few seconds and then I rub that cloth on there to remove the excess anti-static powder and then I use the coordinating little wafer die to die cut that sentiment. And then for the rest of the sentiment, I just stamped it onto that piece of white cardstock that I used originally. And then I'm going to die cut that with one of the um, sentiment strips die set and line that up to also tape that into place, of course, and then die cut that. And then for the rest of my card, I used the pierced hearts plate die. I've used this in... Um, another recent video. So I die cut just white cardstock from that. So it just creates that pierced heart pattern, which I love. I love like cover plate dies, you know, that just add piercing detail like that. So I die cut the white cardstock with that. I trimmed it down so it'd be smaller than an A2 card front. And then I also use the eyelet hearts die set and the largest one I die cut from vellum. And then the next size down, I cut from some navy cardstock and I glued them together with a bit of craft tacky glue and then I put more glue right behind where the navy art was because you could see there glue shows through vellum so I adhered that to my background and then I pulled out some pink baker's twine from my stash wrapped that around this card front and then as is tradition use my reverse tweezers after I you know start forming the bow Use that to hold it in place so then I can sit and fiddle, you know, to get it the way I want. Sometimes it comes together perfectly. Other times with the magic of video editing, I just edit out me sitting and fiddling for a while, <laughs> you know, to get it right. Because every once in a while, like one, I do make it look easy, but that's also because I've been doing this for 20 years and I've hundreds, if not thousands of bows. And then other times I just edit it out because my head's in the way or I'm off camera. And, you know, it's sometimes I swear, you know, twine or ribbon is just like, no. Like, no, you know, it's twisted or it just goes the wrong direction. So, yeah, I, it's not always perfect for me ever. Um, and I try to leave it in when I'm able to to show that. But other times it's like the footage is completely useless or there's no footage because, you know, I'm a professional and sometimes I forget to hit record. <laughs> anyway, anyway, I got it wrapped around, tied my little bow. I adhered a bunch of the little chocolates to it with just some foam squares to give it a bit of dimension. And then I did the same thing with the two parts of the sentiment, just strategic, strategically placed pieces of like foam tape and whatnot onto them so I could kind of adhere them around that baker's twine. And then I'd also trimmed a panel of just white cardstock to smaller than A2 sized. And I stamped that treat yourself sentiment from that same set onto it with some black ink adhered a couple more of those chocolates. My card base is red cardstock and it's A2 size. So the card is going to be four and a quarter by five and a half. So I adhered that panel onto the inside of the card. And then I also trimmed a piece of pink cardstock, just slightly bigger than my um, card front panel. And I had put Big Mama foam tape on the back of the card front panel, just to, again, give it just a little bit of dimension without a whole lot of bulk. And then I'm going to adhere that to my card base and I ended up deciding to do glossy accents on these chocolates because it just gives it that little extra something and I'm trying to make a point of using glossy accents more often I usually avoid it because in my head I'm always like I don't have time to let it dry you guys know I, I post a lot of videos but when you apply it not super thick it dries at least for me it dries fairly quickly 
my biggest thing is always set it aside, let it dry. Don't stick your finger in it. <laughs> I actually showed that in one of my live videos, I think a couple weeks ago, about like when you apply glossy accents, take a little scrap of cardstock and apply it to that as well, just a little bit. So then you can come back and use the scrap and touch that if you're not sure if it's dry without actually touching your, you know, finished images, whatever you've applied the glossy accents to so you don't wreck them because, you know, been there, done that many times. <laughs> so anyway, I just applied just little bits here and there to enhance these little chocolates so they'll have that little glossy finish. And then as my final little bit of embell embellishment, I use the Pretty Pink Posh Valentine Hearts Clay Confetti because of course, like they were perfect. The colors were perfect. The shape was perfect, you know. So sprinkled those kind of here and there onto this card front. And then I just adhered those into place with just little dabs of Craft Tacky Glue. Let that glossy accents dry. Once it's dry, this card is complete. And like I said, it's, it's Valentine's adjacent because it doesn't say Happy Valentine's Day. This is one that, you know, you could send any time of year. It, it would be perfect at any other time of year and include a little gift card to, you know, a chocolate place, that sort of thing, or just include it with a box of cho chocolates, that sort of, you know, idea. Like, why not? So as always, I will have links below to the description um, box under the video. There will be the supply list, link to the blog post, in the blog post, link to the color challenge, all that stuff. So you can just check that out below if you're interested. Thank you all so very much for watching. Thumbs up and commenting. Subscribe if you haven't. And I'll see you very soon in the next one. Bye.